Hi, and welcome back to Codex. Our speaker today is Professor Romanos Malikiaiosis from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. Dr. Malikiaiosis earned his PhD from UCLA in 2010 under the direction of Don Blasius. He held postdocs at the University of Crete, Nanyang Technological University, and Technische Universität Berlin before beginning at Aristotle in 2018, where he is now associate professor. Dr. Maliki Iosis studies applied harmonic analysis, number theory, and discrete and convex geometry. He is a man after my own heart, and much of his work focuses on symmetric reproducing systems. Today, we are very glad to welcome him to Codex to tell us about recent work on the discrete Dugleta conjecture. Please take it away, Romanos. Okay. So we'll talk about uh, the discrete version of uh, Fugleda's conjecture, a problem that has been around since uh, 1974. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on uh, in this problem, and I try to include almost all results that uh, have happened the last few years. I, for myself, have been working on four years, so let's try to see what this is about. So the basic uh, question, first of all, in uh, Euclidean spaces is, uh, okay, so you have a, a domain and you, you ask whether you can do some Fourier analysis on that. So in other words, expressing uh, a square integrable function on a bounded measurable domain as a series of uh, orthogonal exponential. Uh, so we want this, to be an orthonormal basis of exponential functions, of complex exponential uh, functions uh, of this form one over the measure of omega. So you, you can take omega to have measure one, this is the back measure, and have e to the two pi i uh, scalar product lambda times uh, x. So this lambda appearing here are the, they form the so called uh, spectrum and uh, a discrete set of Rn. So if omega satisfies the above conditions, it's called uh, a spectrum. Set. And uh, lambda is the spectrum of omega. And uh, some well-known domains where you can always do that. The basic one where you have two year series is the Vn dimensional cube. You can actually, uh, you have this, you have spectral sets that are parallel pipettes. So A times A, well, an invertible linear transformation applied to the uh, n-dimensional cube. Uh, something different is uh, hexagons okay, on R squared. They also have this property, but not n-dimensional balls, as Yosevich, Katz, and Pedersen proved in uh, 99. Uh, Fuglady himself had uh, proved this fact for the for the disk, okay, the two-dimensional ball. And this was generalized by these three people in all dimensions. Uh, now, of course, you may recognize that the first three uh, sets have some nice geometric property that the n-dimensional ball doesn't have. And this is the tiling uh, condition. Okay, so we call uh, a set of positive measure to be a tile, a translational tile. Okay, we'll only consider these sorts uh, of tiles here. If you can translate by a discrete set T in Rn, so that every, almost every element of Rn uh, is uniquely covered, which means that it can be uniquely represented as a sum of an element in omega and the sum uh, of an element in T, hence the direct sum uh, notation here. Okay, we, you might have overlaps uh, on the boundary, but since it is measure zero, we don't, uh, we don't care about it. And Fuglede connected these two properties, the analytic and the geometric property, in his conjecture in 1974 that a bounded measurable set omega, well, positive measure, of course, is spectral if and only if uh, it is a tile. Uh, that arose from a question, as Fuglede stated in his own paper, that arose from a functional analytic question uh, whether the partial differential operators of, uh, of rank one have uh, self-adjoint restrictions on L2 of omega. 
and this is how the this conjecture arose. This, this, this was actually the characterization of a set of megawatts that satisfies this property. So Fuglede himself proved that proved the first uh, positive result. Uh, there are a lot of special cases to this conjecture proven. Uh, I will just uh, okay, I will not mention anything here, but I will just mention results only results uh, that generalize you know previous partial ones. So for example, let us prove the following: If you have uh, take omega to be an open bounded set of measure one, and lambda to be a lattice with a density one, okay, so the co-volume of the lattice, the volume of a fundamental parallel pipe is one. So if omega tiles the space uh, with a lattice, okay, then the dual lattice is a spectrum of omega. And vice versa, if omega, if the, the spectrum of omega uh, admits, if omega admits a spectrum that is a lattice, say lambda star, then lambda, the dual of that is a tiling complement of omega. So this is perhaps what, uh, uh, what caused the, uh, the statement of this conjecture. So for glad to believe that this is true for every, for every omega. Okay, so if it, regardless of the tiling complement or the spectrum, it doesn't need to have this nice geometric uh, property. Uh, for special classes of uh, sets, okay, so for example, what happens for convex bodies, this was proven very recently by Levin Matolti. But uh, if K is a convex body, K satisfies Gladys' conjecture. There were, there were numerous positive results in this direction, but they had restriction on the convex body, uh, for example, the dimension. But it, this was completely proven uh, recently. Uh, and in general, we had some positive results, special cases uh, of the conjecture, for the first 30 years after the statement. And then, uh, well, some, I guess all of you know that this is this conjecture is not true. Uh, Counter example uh, has been found in 2004 by Terence Tao. Uh, so back, back then I didn't know the, the problem at all. So I was curious to, I mean, to, to see how, how would an expert working on this problem many years would uh, Think about this counter example, and uh, I like to use this direct quote from uh, this paper by Yosevich, Magell, and Pakanathan. That uh, you know, this was sort of a cataclysmic event. Uh, this problem, Pe people did not expect that uh, a counter example would be found, but this conjecture would be false. So, as this uh, quote mentioned, the first counter example that uh, Tao mentions in uh, his paper is. Uh, 12 dimension. Uh, what is special about 12 dimension? So he, there is a, a real Hadamard matrix, uh, 12 by 12. Okay, which, which means that the, uh, the columns have plus or minus one and they're orthogonal to each other. So you can consider a certain set in uh, Z2 to the 12 and uh, you can take, for example, the, the standard basis of Z2 to the 12, okay? And then consider uh, characters whose values are precisely the set uh, uh, in each column, okay? Each column describes uh, the, the values of uh, every character in this set. So, so this produces more or less We'll see the six dimensional results later. So, this, this produces a 12, uh, a spectral set of uh, 12 elements, but this cannot style Z2 to the 12, okay, because 12 does not divide up any power of two. Now, in the same paper, managed to decrease this dimension to five. Okay, so there are spectral sets of R to the fifth positive measure that do not tile R to the fifth. And later in the following three years, they managed to bring down the dimension to three. So for Gleder's conjecture fails in three dimensions. And whenever it fails in a certain dimension, it fails. You can lift the counterexamples to all higher dimensions. 
So it fails in all dimensions for, from three and above, both directions. So they, they're spectral subsets of far cubed that do not tile you know, the space and vice versa. There are tiles of far cubed that do not have a, a spectrum. They do not admit a spectrum. Um, so the counter examples, and this is how we pass to the discrete version. The counter example uh, of tau uh, comes from a spectral sub subset of Z3 to the fifth of size six. Okay, so apparently when you consider the, the discrete version of the conjecture, you know, the tiling requirement you know, gives you a, a restriction on the cardinality of, of, a, of a tiling set. Okay, the cardinality of the tiling set must divide the order of the group. And obviously six does not divide the order of this group here. But there is an element, there is a, uh, a set of uh, size six that uh, has a spectrum. And then you can lift this. So this is what Tao did. So she lifted this to a, a, a spectral subset of Z uh, to the fifth. And then you attach to its point a, a unit cube and you obtain a, a spectral subset in R to the fifth that does not style. Okay, so this, this counter example is, uh, is a unit of unit cube. It's not a, a very weird you know, set. So I'll just measure the, you know, what's uh, going on. So, so the complex exponentials, uh, you know, the discrete analog of the complex exponential are just uh, the characters of this. Uh, in the group we have. So, so basically, when you have the whole character table, you may ask what uh, square sub matrices are uh, orthogonal or Hadamard in this case, because we only have uh, elements of modulus one, roots of unity in this case. So, this might seem like uh, finding a needle in a haystack. So, uh, Tau presented this six by six Hadamard matrix. So this omega here is the standard cube root of unity. So the ij entry is just the value of the cj of a certain character in the ei. So e1 through e6 are the standard, uh, is, this, is the standard basis. Since they're linearly dependent over uh, z3, you can construct a character with prescribed values on this uh, six elements. So for example, for this first uh, column here, you can take the, uh, the trivial character. There's also a character that takes the value one on E1 and E2, omega on E3 and E4, and omega squared on E5 and E6, and so forth. Okay, and these characters, when you restrict them to this set, they are pairwise orthogonal. Okay, so this is a spectrum of E1 to E6. Okay, this is a Hadamard matrix. And then now we, okay, recently the, our understanding of six by six Hadamard matrices is uh, far better than it was 17 years ago, partially due to Fermi Solosi's thesis where he presented, I guess, the last known infinite family of six by six matrices. If I'm not mistaken, this is some sort of isolated matrix in the, in the, in the family of six by six Hadamard matrices. So anyhow, uh, this is dimension six. Why do we go dimension five? Because basically you take the affine hull of this uh, matrices here. You can translate omega by minus e, E1. Okay, and then you have a five dimensional uh, set. So you, you even consider the, uh, this set in a five dimensional subspace. Okay, so this, gives you a counterexample in this Z3 to the, to, to the fifth power. And again, I repeat that you cannot have tiling, the tiling condition because six does not divide three to the fifth. Okay, and the, all the counterexamples, uh, all the counterexamples that I know of that uh, your spectral does not apply tiling, they use this divisibility condition. I mean, they construct a spectral subset whose cardinality does not divide the order uh, of the group. It's much harder to find a tiling set that, that doesn't have a spectrum. And this has happened in a few instances though. Uh, and now let me mention how, 
how these uh, conjectures are connected. So you can state this uh, conjecture for any abelian, any locally compact abelian group, if you like. And we write ST of G if every bounded, if the spectra of the tile direction is satisfied. And T to S if the tile into spectral uh, direction is true. Again, the following theorem, which is due to quite uh, many people, I guess part of this has been proven in several papers. Uh, with the fear of being unfair, I will mention some names. I think Colin Jackis, Ladarius, Wang, Yosevich have proven some directions here. So the, the first one tells us that the tiling to spectral is equivalent to R and Z. So you can go to the discrete case and it's equivalent as working the real line. And also the tiling to spectral uh, in Z is equivalent to, to this condition, to this direction holding for any cyclic group. Okay, if it's true for any cyclic group, then equivalent is true for in Z. Uh, we don't have this, we don't have both direction in the spectra of the tile. In general, the spectra of the tile condition is uh, harder than the tile spectral. And the missing ingredient here is the, the rationality of spectrum. It is the following fact that if you have a spectral subset in R, then it always admits a rational spectrum. Well, I guess, yeah, the, the spectral. Subset, yeah, I mean, I always mean that it has measure one. Okay. So this is the missing ingredient, and this is a, a very difficult problem in its own right. Uh, there are some positive results in this direction, but no, we don't, we don't have the full result. Dutkai and Lai prove the following, for example, that if, if the Foglades conjecture is true, then every bounded spectral set has a rational spectrum. And there are some other partial positive results by Isabella Raba and uh, recently by Bose and Madden. Uh, but I will not mention, I mean, I mean this is not the focus of this talk. Uh, I will mention briefly what happens in non cyclic uh, groups. I have worked mostly on cyclic groups, which is what I'll present uh, later on. So as I mentioned, these properties, uh, spectral to tile and tile to spectral, they are hereditary. So if you prove it for a group G, then uh, they hold for every uh, proper subgroup of G. And you know, in the same manner that if you find a counterexample, then uh, for example, in R3, then all a counterexample can be related to all higher dimensions. So it suffices to examine groups of this form, Z and to the D. If you want to find a counterexample, if you want to find the counterexample, you, you have to work for Z and to the D. What happens now for when D is greater than or equal to two? Okay, so we have at least two, two generators. So called Zex and Matoti uh, constructed a spectral subset of Z8 cubed that doesn't style. Same year, Farkas, Matoti, and Mora constructed a tile, which is uh, one of the rare occasions, a tile that has no spectrum in Z24 cubed. What happens when the, the order of the, you know, of the underlying group of Zn, when, when this is prime in Zp to the fourth? Uh, there are spectral subsets of Zp to the fourth that do not tile when P is odd. Uh, actually, and this was proved by Ferguson, Sotanafan, and independently by Mateus. They constructed uh, subsets of, uh, of order uh, of uh, cardinality two times P. Okay, so two times P obviously does not divide the cardinality of the group, but they have a spectrum. When P is even, things are different. So uh, Tau has proven this for Z2 to be 11, actually, and Ferguson, Sotanafan proved it for Z2 to the 10. And these are the negative results uh, that we have uh, so far. And as you can see, the first two can be lifted to, you know, the negative results that we have for the conjecture in R to the cubed. Uh, this is, the conjecture, conjecture is still open for the first uh, two dimensions. 
and it was one and two. But of course, you, can, you may ask a, a question whether, you know, classified groups were Fugletus conjecture holds or not. We have some positive results. So Fugletus conjecture holds in ZP squared. That's when you have the two dimensional space over ZP. When P equals uh, two, we know it holds in Z2 to the sixth. And it's still open what happens in Z2 to the seven, eight, or nine. And we we'll see proof that, uh, you know, now I'll mention other groups of uh, having two generators. We'll see proof that uh, ZP squared cross ZP satisfies the Fugletus conjecture. Uh, and actually, he mentioned the. Uh, you mentioned another conjecture that if you take cross products of uh, cyclic P groups, then the tiling to spectral direction always holds. Uh, Fallon Kiss and Somlai proved very recently that ZP squared crosses ZQ squared. You can write this also as ZPQ crosses ZPQ. Yeah, okay. this conjecture holds in this group. Uh, in a paper written by 15 people, uh, including Yosevich, Pakanadan, uh, this was uh, the result of uh, summer school, I think. Well, most of the people here are undergraduates. So they proved several results. One among them is, that, is the fact that the tau to spectral direction holds in ZP cubed. The other direction is much, much harder to prove. So, so far, a very nice paper, Fallon, Mayeli, and Villano proved that it holds when P is small, when P is less than or equal to, to seven. So this is what we have in uh, non-cyclic groups. Let's uh, stay on the cyclic case for the rest of, of the talk. Uh, so you take a subset A of uh, Zn. We consider this exponential function, the, the discrete exponential functions. E to the two pi i lambda here is index times a over n. Okay, so we have always the values are always n root of unity. We have the standard inner product on well, the square integrable functions of a. Okay, we restrict, of course, here the values to be on, <coughs> on the set a. The inner product between two exponential functions. Is related to the Fourier, uh, to the Fourier transform of the indicator function a in the following uh, manner. Okay, so the inner product of e lambda and e lambda prime is the value of the Fourier transform of this indicator function on the difference of lambda prime minus lambda. So you can see that we want this uh, inner product to be zero for spectrum. So lambda is a spectrum. If and only if, whenever we take the difference of two different elements of, the, of lambda, uh, they belong to the zero set of the Fourier transform of the indicator function of A. And of course, you know, since this will, will be a basis, an orthonormal basis over the functions defined on A, and this is a, a complex you know, vector space of dimension equal to the cardinality of A, you want lambda to have the same cardinality uh, with A. Okay, so this is the equivalent way of writing what what is what a spectrum of A is. We work in a cyclic group, so uh, it's all, we represent every A as a polynomial, which is, Defined as, you know, the definition is the mask polynomial. This is what the Coven and Majerovic uh, defined it. So you simply take the sum of x to the a, where a belongs to, to the set a. Now we view this as an element not in zx as a polynomial with integer coefficients, but we consider it modulo x to the n minus one. Some people might recognize that this uh, quotient ring here is actually the group ring over the cyclic group of n elements. Okay. And uh, of course, I will mention about divisibility with uh, certain polynomials. 
but only with those polynomials that divide this uh, portion here. Here, for example, take cycloatomic polynomials with order divides x. So how, how does the Fourier transform is related to the mask polynomial? They satisfy the simple relation. So the, the value of the Fourier transform of the indicator function of A at B equals the, the value of A at the nth root of unity raised to the power of B. Okay, it makes sense to consider the values of A only at the nth root of unity. Okay, because this is where this polynomial vanishes here, x to the n minus one. Another way to rewrite the previous condition is the following, that lambda is a spectrum of A, even only if the cardinalities are the same, and A vanishes on this, on the roots of unity of this uh, form here. Okay, so if, for example, lambda L minus L prime uh, has a certain order M, for example, then A vanishes on uh, the M root of unity. Okay. The, uh, the tiling condition also can be written nicely in polynomial form. So A and T are, is a tiling pair. If it only if the product of the two mass polynomials equals the sum of all powers here, one plus X plus X squared and so forth up to X to the N minus one. Okay, and of course, this is the product of all cycloatomic polynomials whose order divides them except for x minus one. And now let's introduce these two properties that were originally introduced by Coven and Majerovitz for uh, the integers. I will uh, mention, I will define them here for the cyclic groups uh, for uh, Zn. Uh, They're called T1 and T2 because they imply tiling, basically. So consider this polynomial A of X here in this, in this quotient ring, and take S of A to be the following set. Take all prime powers, okay, D is a prime power that divides M, such that A vanishes on Z of the D root of uh, unity. Okay, in other words, the cyclotomic polynomial of order D uh, divides A. Okay, so the, the product of this cyclotomic polynomials uh, so if you take the product of ES, where S belongs to this SA, divides uh, divides A. Now T1, this property tells you that A of 1, A of 1 is the, is the cardinality of A, okay, is the product of this number. So if S is a power of uh, P, for example, then phi S of 1 is uh, equals P. Okay, we know that the, the cyclotomic polynomial equals to one when S is, a, is divided by at least two different primes, but when S is a power of a prime, say P, then P S of one equals P. So the right-hand side always divides A of one, but T1 tells us that, you know, we want this to be equal to this product. And the second is slightly more complicated. I will just show with a, an example the next slide to understand what it is. So if you consider powers of different primes, S1, S2, and SK to be to belong in this set SA, then if you take the cyclotomic polynomial of order S, where is the product of these uh, numbers, this will also divide A of X. Now, when, you, when N is a power of prime itself, you cannot have you cannot take a part of different primes here. So T two is a vacuous condition; it always holds. What happens if you have, for example, n to be a power of two primes, p to the n times q to the n? Then T two is uh, simply the following. So if a vanishes on uh, the p to the k root of unity and the q to the l root of unity, then it has to vanish on the root of unity whose order is the product okay, p to the k times q to the l. I will illuminate it further with this uh, example. Let's say for, for instance, that n equals p to the fourth, q to the fourth, r cubed, and a vanishes on the following roots of unity, 
of prime power order. Okay, so it vanishes on ZP, ZP cubed, zeta Q squared, and zeta R cubed. A of X has no other root of uh, order power PQ or R. Okay, so these are the only roots you have whose order divides N. So T1 tells us the following. Okay, so here we have that PP, the, the cyclotomic polynomial of order P, PP cubed, PQ squared, and PR squared, they all divide A, which means that P squared, you have two uh, powers of P, one power of Q and one power of R. So P squared QR divides the cardinality of A. So T1 is the requirement that the cardinality of A is equal to P squared QR. And now you can employ, you can employ T2. You can, you can take uh, different powers of primes in any possible way, and you will find another roots. For example, the fact that A vanishes on zeta P and zeta Q squared implies that A vanishes on zeta P Q squared on the root of unity of order P Q squared. If you apply T2 on uh, on the you know on the vanishing of a on the zeta p cubed and zeta r cubed, then you get that a vanishes on zeta p cubed r cubed, and so on and so forth. You can take three different uh, powers. For example, p q squared and r cubed. A must vanish on the root of unity of order p times q squared r cubed. And there are four other ways to to use t two. So a must vanish on this additional root if t two holds. Okay. So this is what uh, the condition T2 means. And let's see how these conditions are related to tiling and spectrality. So Coven and Majerovic in uh, 98 related these conditions to tiling. They, they were the ones who, who defined, who came up with these conditions. And they proved that um, if A in a cyclic group satisfies both of these properties, Okay, they are stronger than A tiles ZN. What about the converse? If A tiles ZN, then it satisfies T1. But uh, they haven't proven that it implies T2. Okay, so T2, as I said, is vacuous one and is the power of a prime. But they proved that A uh, tiles, that A implies T2 when it is a uh, product of two prime powers. But there's no telling what happens when we have a uh, product of three prime powers or more. But this is, this is not stated as a conjecture, I think, but uh, there, there has been a conscious effort to prove that A implies T2. Isabella Laba in 2002 was the first one who connected this work to uh, spectral sets to, to Glenn's conjecture. So she connected these properties to spectrality. She proved that these uh, two conditions are also stronger than spectrality. They always imply that the set is uh, spectral. Uh, this way, she proved that if uh, N is a power of prime and A is a spectral set, then it satisfies T1, and therefore spectral implies tiling in uh, cyclic groups of order a, a power of a prime. Uh, yeah, perhaps I, should, I think uh, a lot of credit should be given to this paper. This was the one that not only connected the work of Coven and Majerovic, but also along with Tal Rizal, I think were the first ones that uh, made the passage to finite abelian groups. Uh, let us briefly see this. Uh, I mean, it's a very nice and elegant proof uh, that the Pugletus conjecture holds on the ZN when N is a, is a power of a prime. Uh, let's consider the first direction that spectral, spectrum, spectral implies a tyrant. So let's say that A has spectrum lambda and consider the nth roots of unity on which the mass polynomial vanishes. Suppose that they are precisely these ones. Uh, Z up P to the new one up to Z up P to the new K. So you form the product of all the corresponding cyclotomic polynomials, E of X. Now we know that 
the cyclotomic polynomials of prime power order have uh, coefficients zero or one. And if you consider products of these cyclotomic polynomials of different order, okay, they're all prime powers, but of the same powers of the same prime. Then this E of X has uh, also coefficients um, zero and one. So it is the mass polynomial of a subset E with P to the K elements. Okay, so cardinality of P is uh, P to the K, and of course, P to the K divides the cardinality of A. So we want to prove T1. T1 is the fact that P to the K actually equals the cardinality of A. But this subset E has the same uh, spectrum. So the different set of lambda it is a subset of zero and uh, P to the new J times the, the union of this P to the new J times the, uh, yeah, sorry, the, the orders of the differences of uh, elements of lambda should be here. They have order exactly P to the new one, P to the new two, or P to the new K. Okay, so A must have the same cardinality with P, must be P to the K. So A satisfies uh, T1. And the other direction, the tiling spectral, suppose that A tile to Gn, so T is a tiling complement. This is the polynomial expression, Ax times Tx. And as before, these are precisely the roots of Ax. Whose order divides n, and you form the same polynomial. Okay, E of x, you get the product of the corresponding cyclotomic polynomials. You also consider the product of the remaining cyclotomic polynomials. Okay, so for those for those d dividing n, but do not belong in this list here. Okay. So this should divide the product of these two products is equal to this polynomial one plus x plus x squared and so on. So this should divide the mass polynomial of the tiling complement. So you have the following divisibility conditions. P to the K divides the cardinality of A and P to the N minus K divides the cardinality of T. But since the product of these two cardinalities, P to the N, you must have equalities here. So A satisfies T1. Okay, and this is how you prove that, you know, Fugler's conjecture holds in the, uh, Zn when n is a power of prime. I recently proved this one when n is a when n is a square free number times a power of a prime. Okay, so p1 to the n times p2 times pn. These all are discrete uh, primes. So we will use this uh, useful. There's a useful lemma by Coven and Majerovic that if you have a tiling pair a and t. Okay, so they tile the cyclic group of order n. And P is a prime that does not divide the cardinality of T. Then if you take P times T, if you multiply every element by T, uh, no two of them coincide. Okay. And this is also a tiling complement of uh, A. And as a corollary, you can extend this. So if you, if you have this tiling pair and M, is a natural number that is co-prime to the cardinality of T. Then M times T, so multiplying every element of T by M, gives you another tiling complement of uh, A. So when M is uh, square free and you have a tiling pair, the cardinality of A is prime to the cardinality of T always. Yeah. In this case, again, M times T when M is the cardinal, where M is the cardinality of A gives you uh, and this is actually a subgroup. Let me put a thing here. This is a subgroup uh, of Zn when n square free. This factor was used by Lava and Majerovic to prove the talent spectral direction when n is uh, square free. This was actually a question in uh, Terry Tao's blog 10 years ago, and uh, it was proven by two comments of this, independently by the, these two uh, people. So you can, based on this, uh, on this argument, you can, you can go to, you can raise the exponent of one of the primes without, uh, you know, without having a much more difficult proof. So this is what I'll present in the next. Uh,
few slides. So let's uh, let's show the tau in spectral direction. And uh, in this slide, I mean everything holds for arbitrary groups. If you have arbitrary cyclic groups, okay. So if you have if the cardinalities of A and T are co-prime, okay. Then the following happens: m times t is actually uh, a subgroup. It's a subgroup of multiples of m in the Zn, because m times t has cardinality n over m, and this is a subset of the uh, subgroup of order n over m. So it has to coincide with the subgroup. A tiles with this subgroup, therefore the mass polynomial must satisfy this condition here. So A of x. Well, basically, has exactly one element in every class module n. This is what it means in polynomial notation. And if you work, I mean, if you see what the roots of unity here on which a vanishes, you can easily see that a satisfies the t2 property, which is what what is missing. I mean, we from now on we know that when a tiles, it satisfies t1 in every cyclic group. So what we're trying to prove is that it also satisfies t2. What happens if the cardinalities of A and T are not uh, co-prime? What happens when M and T is greater than one? So let's consider this cyclotomic. Let's consider all the cyclotomic polynomials of prime power order that divide A of X. So you have a bunch of polynomials whose uh, order is a power of P1, say with exponents L1 up to LR. And then without loss of generality, you say that P, P2 up to P, P, K divide the mass polynomial of A. The remaining ones have to divide the mass polynomial of the tiling complement. Okay, so these exponents that appear here, okay, along with the exponents of LA, they form a partition of one over M. So you get all powers of P, P1 from P1 to P1 to the nth power. And then here you have the remaining primes here, P, K1 up to P, M. Now consider, uh, well, this is a different n here. Yes, consider n to be the, the maximal divisor of the cardinality of A that is co-prime to T. Okay, so take P2 times PK, or all the primes and all the primes in between. So n times T is also, uh, this, this is, does not, this has a GCD one with uh, the cardinality of T, so n times T, Provides another tiling complement. Therefore, the list of this list of polynomials also divides the t of x to the n. And this, by the way, is the uh, the mass polynomial of m times t. And now you try to verify. We try to see whether t two uh, holds. Okay, now. Okay, let, let's go back to the divisibility condition. Since A of X is, di is divided by all these cyclotomic polynomials, we want to show that A is divided also by the cyclotomic polynomial whose order is the product of any of the primes here. Okay, so if, do is a, if B is a divisor of M, which is the P2 times P3 times PK, we want to show that A vanishes on this root of unity, which holds. Okay, because the product of the polynomials A and T of X to the N on any root of unity must be zero, okay, due to this tiling condition. But T of zeta D to the N, okay, D divides them. So this is T of one, this is non zero. Therefore, A, A must vanish from this uh, root of unity. So this confirms T2 for, uh, for any set of primes that divides. The product P2 times P3 times PK. And now we have to involve the powers of P1 sub tau. Okay, so consider this P1 to the LJ times D, where D is an arbitrary divisor of M. And now again, we'll prove that T of X to the M does not vanish in this uh, root, so A has to vanish uh, in this root. Okay, so T. And if you evaluate T here on this uh, root of unity Z of T1 to the LJ D raised to the power of M, this is some uh, 
for some Galois uh, automorphism sigma. This sigma of t evaluated on the p1 to the lj root of unity, and t does not vanish on this one. So a must vanish on this uh, root of unity, and this confirms t2 completely. This is how you prove the tau the spectral uh, direction in groups of this order. Now, raising a second prime to an arbitrary power, well, it, this argument has some problems. You cannot extend this thing. Things become you know, very difficult when you try to increase second power. And now let's see what happens when, okay, so I try to increase the, the power in the second prime, but you only have to restrict to the case where n is a product of two prime powers. In other words, the radical of n is equal to p times q. Okay, so n is p to the n times q to the n. And now we will mention this result by Lam and Leon. This is in polynomial notation on the vanishing sums of uh, roots of unity. So what does it mean for a in, uh, uh, in z of x? Okay, it has integer, it has no negative coefficients. And suppose that it vanishes on the nth root of unity. Say to a power raised to the power of d. As long as n is a product of two prime powers, the following holds. So a of x d, you can write it as sort of a linear combination, okay, so or polynomial combination of this cyclotomic polynomials. Phi p, what is this phi p raised to of x to the n over p? This is the the mass polynomial. Of the subgroup of order p. Again, the important thing is that p and q can be taken here with no negative coefficients. You can do it with p and q here. If you take three primes, this, this is no longer true. I mean, you can still get this, uh, this sort of uh, congruence, but it is not necessary that p and q have uh, no negative coefficients. Some of them must have uh, negative coefficients. This is something that happens only when n is a product of two prime powers. Uh, some things here, a, as I mentioned before, a of x to the d is a mass polynomial of the, of the multi set d times a. So if, I mean, when, when you multiply every element of a by d, some things might coincide, but you consider the, uh, the corresponding multiplicities. This cyclotomic polynomial that appears here are the mass polynomials of the subgroups of order p. Okay, we'll call this uh, the cosets by this subgroup will be called as p cycles. So if you have a set A and the mass polynomial vanishes on the nth root of unity, okay, where, where n is the product of two prime powers, this tells you that A is the disjoint union of p and q cycles. So this gives you some structure on your set. Okay. And you can work with that. This is actually a very useful tool to uh, to prove the spectral tau direction in certain instances of the Fugladis conjecture. So let's see what happens in the simplest case when n equals uh, p times q. Now, without loss of generality, okay, we have a spectral pair a and b. Uh, we may shift them. When you shift them, the, spe the, the spectrality property, I mean, not go away, you just have a spectral set with the same spectrum, so you can move the spectrum accordingly. You can assume that zero is an element of A and B, and you can also assume that they generate Zn, that they do not belong in a proper subgroup. Okay, because if A, for example, belongs to a proper subgroup and is a spectral, then you we use the fact that the Fugletus conjecture holds in the subgroups of a Zn, okay, it holds in a in the groups of order p or q. So we may assume that they are primitive. This is another uh, terminology, a and b are primitive. Okay. So when this happens, and this is a simple lemma, when a generates zn, the different set, and this is important, okay, taking the different set it appears on the definition of the spectrum, the different sets always intersects the set of primitive elements modulo n. Okay, this is the set of elements of order exactly n. 
uh, the proof is uh, simple. Since A is not generate ZN, it's not a subset of the subgroup of order, uh, you know, PZN or QZN. So you can find elements outside of PZN, not divided by P, and an element A prime not divided by Q. And you can consider cases and you can always find an element that uh, belongs to ZN prime and also to any minus A. So if A is not divisible by Q either, then this A is a primitive element, A minus zero. Okay, so zero also belongs to A. And similarly, if A prime does not belong to Q, then A prime is primitive. But if A belongs, is divisible by Q and A prime divisible by P, then their difference is uh, primitive. Yeah, this, so this is an important fact for, uh, this holds for all N that are uh, products of uh, two prime powers. Okay, so you have uh, both A and the spectrum, when you take the different sets, they have uh, primitive elements. And this implies that both A and B vanish on the root of unity. And this gives you a structure on the, a nice structure on A and B. So both A and B are unions. These two are unions, of course, it's of the subgroups N over P, ZN, and N over QZN. Now, when N equals PQ, any two such cosets intersect, and you want these two unions. So you will have union of uh, one kind. For example, A will be disjoint union of cosets of P times ZPQ. And since A and B have the same cardinality, B should have, should be of the same type, should be this joint union of process of P, ZPQ. Okay, so P, this subgroup is a subset of a different set of, uh, of B. So A should vanish. This, this is a subgroup of order Q. Okay, so A should vanish on the roots of unity of order Q. And you consider different, uh, Cases now, if A vanishes on the order, on the root of unit of order P, then A has to be the entire group, which is obviously a title. Okay, P also divides A. If not, then B minus B have to avoid uh, the sets, uh, the the element of order P. Okay, so B minus B intersection with this subgroup is only trivial. So every element of this unique module of Q. So A is less than or equal, as at most. So A is a single coset of this subgroup, so it's titled ZPQ. Uh, I don't think I have much time. I will just. Okay, so you can you can try and raise the exponents. So it, this has not been completely successful, so it was it's a bit frustrating. So. So what you do is to try and use, I'll just, this is a very you know, broad stroke to what's, what's going on. It gets very technical, uh, but uh, okay, let, let, me, let me try and explain what, what's going on. Uh, first of all, you use some sort of inductive approach, okay? Or equivalently, you say, okay, let's consider that the spectral to tile direction fails for group ZN, but we want this N to be minimal, so we want, to let this conjecture to hold for any proper subgroup of ZN. And when you take a spectral that doesn't tile uh, of maximal cardinality, say with spectrum B, as I mentioned before, they both have to be primitive. So, so this gives you a root okay, of A and B. So Z, Z, I, N. So this means that, I, that uh, there are disjoint unions of uh, P cycles and Q cycles. Okay, so you have some structure, and then you take the different sets of A and B, they give you more roots. So both A and B vanish from the roots of unit of order P and Q. This in particular means, for example, that A is equidistributed modulo P and modulo Q. And uh, this is what I call the root handling. So you, you get more roots. You, as soon as you have a, a new root, this reveals something about the structure of both A and B. You consider the different sets, and sometimes, Okay, it's, it's not direct most of the time, but you get more roots. And how would you work this? You get more roots, for example, Z of is on the root of unity of P to the N. P to the N is the maximal you know, power of P that divides N. Q to the N, P to the N times Q, P, Q to the N, 
and so on. <clears throat> so anyhow, you you get some uh, you establish the goal is to establish a, co a contradiction. Unfortunately, this establishes a contradiction if either one of the exponents is small or you have this condition here, if the one prime power is relatively small compared to the other prime q. So to, as I don't have time, I'll just summarize the, the positive. There's only positive results. Okay, if there's a negative, then this leaves a counter example in one dimensional Glenn's conjecture. So we only have positive results in cyclic groups. The one I mentioned, the talent to spectral holds if n is uh, the product of square free times the power of the prime. Isabella Laba showed that the talent to spectral direction holds when n is a product of two prime powers. So I so so that when n is a power is a p square times qr these are different primes and my results my recent results are this one so if p is less than q and then is p to the n times q to the n then for glad is conjectural holds as long as n is less than or equal to nine or n less than or equal to six and also when p to the n minus two is less than p to the four with my collaborators, we, we also show that he's shown line visual. We also show that this holds when n is a product of four primes. And I will finish with this very, very recent result by Isabella Laba and her student Logner that showed the talent to spectral direction Gn when n is the PQR squared. And this is a effort. This is a total two papers, total 120 pages. Uh, of course, the first half, I mean, it also proves more general structural results in the tilings, but uh, the second paper, which is specifically this proof is 70 pages, so it's, uh, yeah, I cannot imagine how much harder this spectral time direction is. So that was all I want to say. Thank you very much for your attention.